one can. Back. Welcome to the show. Let's look at this. Are we dispel to gain our authority. And to push back all inferiority to get our communities back and to get our dollars back. I'm your humble host, Dr. K. This is my other host, gracious host, Minister P. Good morning. Good morning, uh, brothers and sisters, all of our Good morning, brothers and sisters, all of our listeners and all of our friends. We are grateful that you have joined us today to be enlightened uh, and to another show that look at this. How are you doing, Dr. K? You got your, yes, I can. Uh, I'm trying to volume up a little bit. And volume up a little bit. All right. Yes, so maybe it's me, but until you get you, uh, you want to get you in there, right? The right range. Yeah. Oh yeah. So are we there? Turn up just a little bit more. Okay. That's 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 it. <laughs> okay, well, okay. 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 I don't want you to be. Uh, it might be something on my end. I uh, upgrading our system, people, with new sound boards, and sometimes it's uh, challenging to deal with some of this. Uh, but we're getting it done. We're getting it done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to just definitely going to just. So, yeah, it's sounding good on my end. No, keep it moving. Today's show is brought to you by W. Uh, this, you're tuning into WKTSE Radio. Uh, let's look at this. Today's show is brought to you by Wakana, Wakana for life, keep that same energy. Your health is your wealth. Uh, we, we can't really say, we can't say that enough, you know, um, I advise in this time of year, everybody go and, and you know, make a move to, even myself, uh, to we all gonna make that move to get, a, get that doctor's appointment uh, as well, just to, you know, just to be on the, on the side of trying to keep your health in order and keep things moving. That way you can, you know, we can, uh, you know, things happen as far as, as uh, you know, uh, 
physical things may happen, but it's physical is reference to inside your body. But then we know the things that happen out in the world that is uncontrollable. But as far as physically, definitely go, um, you know, get your checkup, <laughs> you know. So we definitely want to uh, keep up on that and make sure and we move that's to... The, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Let, let's stay right there for just one moment because you brought up a, a very pertinent uh, 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 statement there. Listen, get your, like, like Dr. K said, get your physical health in check. Listen, brothers and sisters, do the dreaded exercise, eat right, exercise, <laughs> and eat right. It's so important. Uh, so, so often we want to just sit in, front, sit in that chair in front of the television, but get up, do some exercises, and yeah, eat right. Don't eat so many fried foods. Come on, come on, y'all. Don't eat so many fried foods. I know they're tasty, but we got to watch out for our health. Like Dr. K said, our health is our wealth. Yep. Oh, yeah. Health is definitely our wealth. And you know, we definitely want to keep that energy in reference to getting our health process in order. So, yeah, looking at our topic today, uh, talking about Top today is updating the code. Updating the code. Updating the code. And what code are I, am I talking about? Uh, it's, it's not the code of your cell phone, not the code of the programming code, but code is reference to our people staying on code and getting in the midst of a code and being able to align what codes we need to be abiding by because things are happening in front of us uh, we, we seem to be like we're gaining ground on what would be something you would that would be considered to be monetarily uh, monetarily would be perfect and great because that would help our situations as reference to our housing possibly job-wise, and a lot of us are in a position where we have great jobs, but at the same time, it, as we, doesn't, we, we, we can't, we don't see the, the vast, the majority of the evidence of that. Because when you look at some of the things around, as far as the main society, the greater society, we don't have control of a lot of things that's in front of us. So as reference to talking about code, the code of, what do I mean by code? Updating the code, I mean a code to really put in a place to where you have to follow a guideline. Plumbing codes, they have code for plumbing, they have code for electrical, they have code for building a house, there's a code. Those are codes that we have to abide by to get a standard. And do they update them? Yes. But for the most part, that code stays in place as reference to, hey, we follow, we follow this code. You have to follow that particular code. And then at the, at the same time, there's a, a lot of times when there is a guideline to the code. There's a simple guideline. There's a guideline to where to say, okay, this is the simple guideline. And they don't, they don't revert from that code. They stay right to that code. They said, well, this is this is the simple code that we that we follow. We may update it over time. We may adjust it over time, but there's still a code that we abide by. Right. So one of the codes that's out there now that anyway, there's a guideline that I have in front of me. There are eight points of this particular you know, if you want to call it, that, that, that can be a cold aspect. And that's just starting, you know, just as I uh, greeted Minister P this morning, I said, good morning. So that first code should be to speak politely. Uh, when we look at speaking politely, we're greeting someone. We're greeting that person that's in front of us. Somebody, mainly somebody that look like you is, is for the most part who, who you're going to greet because in times there, that's the first person who you may see in the day. So you want to greet someone with possibly good morning, you know, good afternoon, good evening. And that's a speaking politely, huh? even how are you doing today? 
So that is number one. Uh, Number two and, and, would be... and let me let me speak on that number go, one. Go ahead, go ahead, that's that's such a, a great point. Listen, we all need to be gracious to one another. Uh, so many times we we walk past each other <laughs> and just look and, and walk on past. No, we need to have a code of greeting. Uh, you know, uh, so many in in past times. When, when, when brothers used to walk past each other, we would do this thing with our head, uh, uh, Dr. K, we would go like this. You know, and, and so that, that was it. It was just a greeting. What's up? But we need to show that commonality of greeting to one another, no matter what, because you never know what that other person is going through. So it's always that code of greeting, number one. Number one is this greeting greeting that person that's in front of you. Number two would be pay fairly for what you buy. And you know that in, in today's society, you know, they, they come up with this, uh, we're in a recession. So the prices go up on everything. So that would be against, that should be a code that should be against, uh, if we're talking about a code as reference to us, and I'm speaking of us as a black community, we should have a code. That code number two should say we should be able to pay fairly for what you buy, not to overpay. A lot of times we are in a position to where we have to overpay for things because it's there or it's popular because the greater society say this is what's popular, this is what's out there and everybody's buying it. Um, so this is why the price is this high. So we, we have to keep that that one particular, those, these are the, these are the outlines that we have to start looking at. Okay. What is my code? And that's number two, pay fairly for what you buy. Meaning that that should be a great price. I shouldn't have to overpay for something. I shouldn't have to pay for something that may not do me any good. And, you know, at all, all at all times, you know, we are overpaying for cars or overpaying for housing or overpaying for, taxes we're overpaying for a lot of things that we should not be even paying for this and that's something you know that's something to be talked about but that 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 statement says a lot into reference to what you're doing in life well you know that that then in turn that empowers us to do what uh, become an educated consumer just don't go to the first store you you come to and the price is that high Look, shop around, and and nowadays you don't even have to shop around. All you got to do is get your your, your phone out uh, and, and look what stores are having a competitive price on anything. Brothers and sisters, viewers and friends, listen. Become an educated consumer. Know what you're spending your money on. Know who you're giving your money to. <laughs> that's so yeah. important. Yeah, mm, that's very important. Know know who you're giving your money to. One thing, you know, I say it in my statement every every time we're on is to regain our authority in our communities, meaning and and as that, that statement, you know, to buy black to get your dollars back. Even though we run into a lot of our sister and brother stores, we'll say that to may not, you know, have the fair aspect of a treatment, but that's what the management is for. That's what you have a customer relationship, customer service for. That's what the suggestion box is for. And my suggestion, it doesn't have to be mainly a suggestion box sitting right there on the counter. You want to say my suggestion box is, is actually, hey, may I, can I speak to the owner or can I speak to the manager? Because I believe that I have paid uh, the fair price um, that I've been given here. And it doesn't have to be that well, let me go over here because you know we have that bad syndrome, and it's the uh, <laughs> which is which is ridiculous. Somebody's ice is colder than the next. Yeah, ice yeah. is ice. It's a, right. <laughs> when you go when you on a road out out on a, on the expressway, you know, as we are in the winter time right now, and the ice they call it black ice, right? That black mm -hmm. ice, it don't change. 
If you're going to slip on it, you're going to slip on it. <laughs> you're going to slip. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't change. So, well, well, let me go over here and test out this black ice because it, it might be a little bit different as far as slippery. Uh, or let me, uh, I'm going to go over here and, and, and see if that will slip different. Or no, you're going to, you're going to slip, you're going to slip. Uh, that's, that's, there ain't no change. It's reference to different the ice. Uh, his ice is cold or his ice looks a little bit more uh, different. No, it's ice is ice. Once it's frozen, it's frozen. So, you know, we have to we have to understand our mindset of how we use the we think about things. Uh, because that 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 tends to get away from us as reference to well, I gotta go over here and buy something different. As as simple as that, ice. You know, I can understand and so well, this car is not the right particular car for me be, just because of because I did my research on it, right? That's different. You know, that's a that's a mechanical. Um, machine that you say that may something may be built different than another but when it comes to simple things like as ice or water when you put water in any particular water i mean water for the most part is water you know you, of course you may have your they say alkaline as far as purity yeah you can you can bounce and forth back between that but other than other than that water is going to be water ladies and gentlemen water is not going to change uh, water may freeze Maybe cold, maybe warm, but water is going to be water. Uh, if you're thirsty, most most times you 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 may have a, a liking if you're in a position to say, well, I like my water a little cold. But if you're thirsty, you're not going to care how how cold your water is. You're going to just drink it. So we we have to pay attention. Um, you know, it, and even in this reference to tea, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I like to have my little tea. So I I do like it hot. But at the same time, it, tea gonna be tea. I'm either gonna drink it or I'm not. And I think you drink it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, you brought up a great point. Um, and uh, this, your show, let's look at this, uh, is, is focusing on not the problems, we're focusing on solutions. And we're, we're observing the problem, but we're bringing in solutions which empowers. Uh, each and every one of us. And you brought up a good suggestion. Listen, when you go inside these stores, I haven't seen a store lately uh, in years that has a suggestion box, but you brought out a good point. You said, here's the suggestion box. Go and ask for the manager. Now here's the deal with that. that this is, this, listen, this is great, you all. This is our, our empowerment. You go to the manager. If enough people go to that manager and say, listen, the price for this is kind of high. If he gets 30, 40, 50 of those coming in, guess what that manager is going to do? Why? Because we have applied pressure to him for a change in our black community. I don't care whether it's a black owned store or a uh, uh, white owned store or Asian owned store. You go to that manager and say, we, the community are speaking. And that is the greatest uh, suggestion box that you could ever have. Dr. K, that's it. You brought up a good point. We must get these and start applying these principles in our everyday living. And, and that's that's a that's a code code of we, we don't want to maybe say code of conduct, but just say code. That's code of action. Yeah, yeah, code, code of, code of action. action. That, that, that should be right now. You, you hit it right on here, Mr. B, a code of action. What is your code of action on everyday aspect? That's number yep. two. Pay fairly for what you buy. Number three, return everything you borrow. <laughs> you know, it's, we go, we're going to have a lot of laughs on today's show because that right there is number three. We know good and well, you know, we're good for that, borrowing things and never returning them. You know, we may have <laughs> a bad habit in returning things to people. <laughs> That's because they become ours. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I can't stress that one enough. I, I, I know I've lent out of many of things that has not returned to me. And <laughs> I, so I, you know, I think about that and I'm like, wait a minute, that, that hasn't been returned to me. So I, I, I make it my due diligence to whatever I borrow from someone, I, I, say, I gotta, I gotta get this back. I gotta get it back. You know, even if I say, hey, you know, I'm gonna keep it, let me, I'm gonna borrow a little bit longer but uh, I'll get it back to you as that's soon as it. I can. Yeah, you, you gotta, that, that, that's, that, that, that's that. Now, here, here's the overall aspect of in, in walking through these points. 
communication, right? Mm -hmm. That's the that's the top tier of communication. So we're looking to communicate as reference to an aspect of what we're doing. Communicating is, is very key to how we're going to do things. So that number three is very important. Return everything you borrow. You know, if, if you're borrowing money, if you're borrowing uh, whatever you're going to borrow, you need to return. Okay, if it's a hammer, return that hammer, <laughs> return that tool, return that 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 doll, return return what you borrow from someone. It's the way we stick to the code of action. Code of action, ladies and gentlemen, is is the new. That's the reset. That's the update. Here we are, not code of conduct, code of action. And we're updating this process. We're going we to add on to this. And so anything that you borrow, please re return it. You know, you know, church members, <laughs> that Bible, that look nice. With the, you know, I've seen that too, Minister P. <laughs> on mm. both sides. Somebody and, borrowing the Bible. Yeah. And not returning it. Come on. I've now. seen it on both sides, Minister P. <laughs> I've seen it on both sides. Somebody, oh, that's a nice Bible. They're like, oh, my goodness, took it. You know, that, that Bible didn't even belong to that person. I, I've seen them take it. And then he goes, so he go to the other side. And then somebody had a nice, um, the Quran. I've seen it even that aspect. And then, you know, they know better. <laughs> you know, they, I, I look at it, the guidelines of reference to it being in that sect, they're more strict than anything. You better not <laughs> put something back that you lift from somebody. But I've seen it. Yeah, somebody's I've seen done it. that. Yeah. I've seen people do it, just pick up and just and like it's theirs and then don't even return it. So that, I'm saying, even if you borrowed it, say, oh, I borrowed it. Let me go put this back. You have to have that mindset. That's number three, borrowing something that doesn't belong to you and it needs to be returned. Right. Let's go Listen, on to number four. Let, let me just add to, add, add to that because when you borrow something, that means two persons have come together with an agreement and said, mm -hmm. yes, you can take this from my possession and I give it over to your possession. Now you possess it, but the conditions are that you return it back in a certain time. Uh, but when you, when you just take something, that's called stealing. <laughs> you just stole something. You didn't borrow it. You just stole it. But, but, but all of this borrowing, and this is a, a great topic here, all of this borrowing is grounded in one thing, and that's communication. Remember years ago, my word was my bond. When I said it, it happened. And so um, we need to get back to that understanding where my word is my bond. If I said it, it's going to happen. If I borrowed it and said I return it, I will return it. However, like you brought up earlier, listen, if you can't return it on time, word, communicate and say, look, let me borrow it for another two weeks. You know, let me borrow this for... And, and we got to watch out for borrowing money, too. <laughs> because, listen, you have to return that money. When it's time to return, you have to return that money. It's, it's just that simple. So all of this is rooted and grounded in uh, communication. And communication does what? It brings about an understanding for both parties. One of the greatest things that you can do to hinder Unity is have misunderstanding. Yeah, you can definitely have a misunderstanding uh, for sure. You know, that definitely will boil down to uh, when you're borrowing something from someone and you not return what you borrowed. So let's go on to the next uh, code of action. Pay for anything you damage. Say it again, pay for anything you damage. You know, we, we, here, here's another uh, tripping stone that we, that we run into in our community that we've gotten so comfortable with. We, we don't pay for anything that we damage. You know, I've seen, oh, in the street, I've seen the, the most silliest things uh, someone in a gas station just back up and then they're backing up gently, gently, gently. And then, you know, they just, so I don't know what was going on there. He hit, he hit this guy's car. I mean, he, I saw him backing up slowly. Then all of a sudden, he just hit the gas, bam, and then put it in, put it in drive and took off out the gas station. I'm looking, I said, what? I said, well, what was the purpose in that? 
I said that here you trying to get away for something that you know you did. Now here you backing up slowly and then you hit the gas and then you so I didn't, you know, I understood it, but I don't understand. It. Understanding the mindset as reference to why would we do something like that? You know, why would somebody do something like that and then not pay up for their damages? If you damage something, you have to repair it. You have to tell, hey, hold up, man, I broke that. I, I was in a store, one of the stores the other day, I dropped the juice. I, right away, I went to, one to clean up so nobody don't slip. Two, I did say, hey, I dropped that juice and it broke. I wasn't even really buying it. I was moving it to get to something else and I dropped it and it broke. So I told the, um, the store attendant and they didn't say anything. They just said, oh, don't worry about it. Just, just have somebody clean up and keep moving. But that was just an example of, um, at least I was honest to tell someone. But see, you know, I have to be more honest in everything I do is reference to breaking something. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go into number five. Do not hit or swear at people. We have that bad. Enough knows we got that bad. We either gonna fight or we either gonna be hitting someone. You know, or swearing. That 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 those those between those things we have to be very mindful because you know we, we as a community we, I don't know if we are still stuck in this tribalism thing, but we have a tendency to, you know, we we one we love to see fights. But it, even though that's just in sport, but let the professionals keep up with that and see. And, and then when it's time to fight, for the most part, not saying that we won't do it. We not sometimes, if, even I was saying in today's times, we don't fight the proper way. Let me say it like that. We don't fight the proper way. When, when it's time to fight for a particular thing, we tend to revert from going to fight for what is what will be right. So we, we tend to back off from uh, and, and uh, or tending to hit we hit the wrong people we'll say that we hit the wrong people we tend to hit the wrong people and swear at the wrong people i mean we shouldn't be doing either one of those unless we have to for the most part unless it's perceived in, in, in the code of action and say well hey this is the time that i need to actually swear to to someone or i may have to hit someone you know, in the, in the time of now, you know, this 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 phony politician is now that's who you should be swearing at. <laughs> that's who you should be hitting, at. especially if you ask for all the things that you want and then he never produced it. You know, it's it's, it's almost time to say a few swear words and maybe come to do some blows because hey man, well, you you lied to me. Well, let, let, let me let me say this on that uh, subject <laughs> because. Uh, there is there is a time and a place for everything. The Bible says there is a time for everything. And there's a time to, to fight. Uh, that's when you are defending yourself. We, we're talking about physical right now. We're going to get into the, uh, 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 the behavioral action, the political action later. But right now, physically, there is a time when you have to defend yourself. And you better know how to fight. Don't walk around in this world thinking, I'll never have to fight. You will have to fight. Physically, to yep. defend yourself, to defend yourself from, from uh, the, the things that are coming against you. And so uh, we, we know that, that that's going to come. But the swearing thing, I mean, that's, that's non-productive. Listen, you can best use your energy and words in, in, in a better place uh, than, than, than swearing. That brings nothing to, to nothing. It just, it, to me, that just shows your lack of tasteful verbiage. As you can be seen in instead, you know, uh, words are powerful. They uh, are. Listen, they there are. was a, there was a saying. Remember, six and stones might uh, break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's just that's a lie. Words do. Words are as effective as sticks and stones. Yeah. But this physical but we, fight. But we can't let we can't let swear words. You know, we that's one of them things when the speed where we see a lot of our people, especially our female counterparts using and not all of them use it but some, i've heard a lot of them you know the b-i-t-c-h where you know they, they run that off 
uh, like like it's <laughs> yeah your real name <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> what where they do that at? Like, what, why are they calling me what they reference to each other like that i say this is uh, and so they, they they adapted and, and they gravitated to that and they accepted that that's my that's everybody's name when i when i see the b-i-t-c-a hey b-i-t-c-a you know i mean come on we we so we, what are we teaching our our young ladies to keep saying that and keep using that word i mean we have to be mindful that's that's a word that should be cast out you know that that that, that word when you look at yeah. the definition of that word means to be it's referring to a dog for the most part a female dog female if you think dog. about it that's a female dog but so what we're saying is that oh male female human you a dog now so you can refer to yourself as a B-I-T-C-H. You know, we, we had to pay close attention to those, those particular words and stop and refrain from using them, especially in this time of code of action. When we use a code of action, we have to refrain from using those terms. Because it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Listen, oh, yeah. You, you, your words that you speak out of your mouth, they register within your spirit. And, and it, it, it fulfills a certain uh, phenomenon on the inside. You become what you speak. Yep. So you, you, you're that word, you will become that word. And you will start mm -hmm. acting just like that word. Mm -hmm. That's why I always, the people always say, well, Minister P, how are you doing? Here it is. My, my reply to them, Dr. K, is I'm great. I don't care if I got a headache, if my back is hurting. I'm great. I'm great. Why? Because I'm uh, producing a self-fulfilling prophecy within my own body, you know, and then and then it goes out into the community to my brothers and sisters. But I'm great. Have you, have God's to. representative and doing another test. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You definitely have to. Um, if, if if you if we are aspects of uh, if we are a revision of God, and yeah. we supposed to be as gods in the earth. We should represent ourselves as such, even though we have been presented with different elements in society. To and speak us. that way. Yeah, and speak that way. And and so we revert using and using it. Now think about it. Here we're, you're using this English language, right? That has been right. put into society, That's which it. only can derive of every other language. That's how you derive to pull together the English language. So everybody in the world, for the most part, wants to speak the English language, right? Yeah. So if you go into another country, now here you get, and here, here our females are gravitating to this word, or even the males, you know, we use the word, yeah, we use, in, in our culture, we use the slang term, right? Mm -hmm. you know, we will say, hey, brother, or, you know, because in, 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 innately we are, you know, particularly brothers, but we're not we are. blood brothers, but we're brothers in the same culture, so we use right. that term that way. But for the most part, people in the street, hey, 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 you know, the N word, right. Right? we're word. using that loosely. Um, and even, even if you look at that word, and then again, we're going to use the words as reference to what is conducive to the English language. For the most part, you go to another country, most of those people in those words, you know, Negrito, of course, that's, that goes a long way. Negro is so it's breaking down in so many different ways. But this B-I-T-C-H word, somebody in another country may not even know what you're talking about. Because we're speaking English, <laughs> so they know not of some of these don't even know of these. And they, they we're talking about cuss words, right? So they may not even know of that as a cuss word because they only speak the. And they, well, I don't speak English, so I don't know what that means. You know, I'm not sure what that means unless I just happen to pick up an American dictionary now speaking the English language. And suppose they start using it, not knowing it, I, right? I, and I, I pick up a word. Right. Hey, you you're know. right. A B I T C H. Right, right. <laughs> And you're looking and see, at them strange because they don't that, look, look like that. you. Now you're ready to go back to what? <laughs> you're ready to go back to number five. And that's hitting, and then you're going to do some swearing. And then <laughs> you're going to damage something right. that you know you're not going to pay for. Then you're going to borrow somebody's car to go do the damage. <laughs> see, see, I'm going backwards. In this hey, listen, Dr. K, can I say this to our <laughs> listeners? Listen, brothers and sisters, viewers and friends, Stop using that, that word. Stop, stop uh, delegating yourself to that level. Stop it. Elevate your conversation. Elevate your, your verbiage. And 
uh, number one, speak courteously. I'm so glad you have this, this uh, updating of the code. Speak courteously to one another. Quit calling them those type of derogatory names because what you are doing is taking a gun and shooting yourself right in the foot. Stop that. Thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stop using those words today. <laughs> look, look at the date. It's 1-22-2022. <laughs> So in 2222, on today, we're going to start using those words from here on out. Yes. Anybody yes. that's listening, and then I'll say it to anybody on the shade, don't, don't refrain from using those terms. You know, we have, to, we have to start stepping out. You know, I was just speaking with somebody the other day about, you know, what, what used to happen in, in the community when we were younger. You know, we had uh, what they call either, either Big Mama or... <laughs> uh, Miss so and so, or uh, you know, Miss so and so. She 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 used to. They used to meet this one lady on my block. She used to we used to call her Big Mama, and she used to right. lean over on her porch and be watching everything. And you, hey, Big Mama, hey, can you? And she tell you, hey, run to the store for me. And she's just a neighbor, but she yeah. you treated her as an elderly, and you respected her. And she and she would get on you, and she saw you doing something out of pocket. And I'm gonna tell your mother, or she get on you herself. Right. I'm gonna tell your dad. I know you're supposed to be doing that. What happened to that? Man, Nobody even wants you even speaking to them nowadays. Yeah, we need. Period. It. Yeah. And yeah, every community is... had that big mama. Every community <laughs> had it. Yeah. And she was respected. She so was you wouldn't respected. do you wouldn't do stuff right in front of big mama. Nope. Because because you knew what was going to happen. Yeah. And everybody had the, that. Everybody formulate to. They we had this code anyway already innately. We knew innately to do those right things you know, coming up in every time span. We still had that aspect of a code and we, well, we refrain from really sticking to that code. So I'm going to number six a bit of time. I said, okay, number six is do not take liberties with women. So that could be, uh, that could be broken down in so many words uh, as reference to taking, you know, that, <laughs> We, we we need our explained Jay Reese to, to help us out. Right. With that one. But right. we're gonna go into that. I mean, as reference to how I would perceive that we we that is you respecting. Just like we talk about, you know, that, that goes well and going right into uh, what we were talking about as reference to Big Mama. You know, you just you, she was a woman. You respected her. You know, that just aspect of respect. You know, you you you're not taking the liberties from a woman, and that. Really, to go into that, we you know we we can speak to that, but we it would definitely have to have a, an expertise of a woman to say what to say. Hey, I don't want this to happen to me. You know that that should come from a woman saying what she doesn't want. We know what we don't want for our women, and we know we innately know that because our overall goal is to protect our women. But they reverted to you have those here. You have these classes of groups now. Well, I'm in a bitch group. Well, I'm in a bourgeoisie group. Well, I'm in a ratchet ghetto group. Or well, I'm in a well, I'm just in a neutral group and I don't deal with none of them other groups. You know, that, that's the type of that's what I'm seeing out here. Mr. We had these different groups for our women yeah. Yeah. today. Even and speaking to that number six, we have different groups. So the, the liberties of with this with the with the women, they they've, you know, and so in some point they've gravitated towards something that shouldn't have been presented to them. You know, this women's movement that's a negative because if you if you black in reference to a woman you you black first your your aspect to you know the, the the saying goes as it might be a headache being a woman sometimes right because women get headaches when they come on a menstrual cycle and get these headaches and they get moody but it's it's, it's cancerous being black so that's where you start first in society, use cancer as being black a lot of times. Really, for the most, all the time, if you look at it, in to how things have been going. But as we, as we try to steer this thing back into a, a neutral lane and get it on the right track, this is where the code comes in to where we have guidelines to how we're going to be treating each other and mainly our women and each other. But so that number six, it goes hand in hand because the, the, the Liberty of our woman is the woman who becomes the mother of our children. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it says, don't take liberties 
uh, with, with, with women. What I interpreted that as is don't disrespect. Don't disrespect. You know, a disrespect, don't disrespect a woman's values. Don't disrespect a woman's standard. When she says no, that means no. We, 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 we've been talking now in, in the sexual realm. If she says no, that means no. Right. Understand that, brothers. Be, no means no. no. It's, it's just that simple. And so uh, we must uh, respect her. So how do we respect our women in our community? Well, number one, here we are to protect them. We are the protectors. The men, you are a protector. Uh, young men inside your house, you're still living in your house with, with your mom, you still protect mom in that household. Uh, husbands, you protect your wives. That's your job. We are to protect women. Uh, and then number two, we are to provide. We are the provider. We provide for our women, our household. Uh, uh, and then number three is we pray. We pray over them. We, we pray the blessings into their lives. We pray them with uh, uh, empowerment and self-esteem. We have to esteem our women higher. Build up their self-esteem until that that cup of esteem just flows over. And guess what? When it flows over, who going, who's going to benefit? The king. The yeah, king. The king. The king. <laughs> look, I mean, you, we talked about that on the previous show when it's about yeah. nature. And you right. look at the lion. Even though it's reference to how the lion reacts in the wild, uh, we don't react as such. But the, the key word of, is protection. And that's how you become a king. Protection. And protection. Come on, man. To, Come on now. Pray, you're praying to protect. <laughs> And the praying of the energy gives you the aspect of protecting. Yeah, yeah. It's that's and simple. again, that's people, it. you know, we we ain't, we we're not gonna tell you how to pray, right? Because everybody gets, you know, when we talk about religion, everybody wanna fuss and fight, right? So right. When, when we can just only guide you as reference to how you should pray. We don't tell you how to pray, we can just guide you to prayer. Now, to me, prayer can be as reference to, you know, as reference to maybe talking about praying to the, the uh, reference to God. And, and many people, again, tug a one back and forth for who God may be. So if you particularly as reference to, if you have a mind, God could be the higher aspect of who you are, right? Because we're representatives of them. And I have to use my brain to do things within my means of culture wise. So if I'm in a land as reference to who I am, I should be doing God-like things. And I'm saying I'm not gonna go and kill everybody, <laughs> of course. <laughs> But it may come a time to where I may have to do that, especially if it's going if it's if it's something that doesn't align right with these code of actions. There may be a point of action to where I may have to take a life because it's too much of that that has dwindled over to go against the code, right? So if you're going against the code so much, you may have to remove some certain things. We may have to remove from what is not aligned properly. And of course, we don't promote that, but it, it, that is the aspect of, you know, when you have war and counter war, the counter war is the way you may have to retaliate against something to bring about something that is to be put in a perfect aspect of where it needs to be. Look at, the, look at nature. When there's something negative in nature, what happens? Tsunami, earthquake, all these elements start to happen, right? And, and, and that's, there's nothing nobody can do about it. But see, that's that's the earth in this in this way of saying, hey, no, something's out of line, and I need to. And the only way to correct it is, hey, this volcano has to erupt. Tell Beautiful me if I'm question. wrong, Minister P. <laughs> Tell me if I'm well, wrong. We we all know a volcano does what? It relieves the pressure. That's what yep. that that that's all about. So the 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 uh, volcano eruption over there in Tonga, uh, it 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 produced a tsunami. You know, it, it produces that, but. Uh, it it released a pressure, and and that's what that's what defending yourself is all about. We will defend ourselves, uh, and if it causes a loss of life, that comes with the defense of ourself. We don't go out there seeking to kill people, but we we are uh, able uh, to defend ourselves, and we must defend ourselves, and we must de defend our respect for women by protecting them, providing for them. We didn't talk enough about providing, uh, Dr. K. That means, brothers, 
provide, that means a job, that means working, that means bringing in the cash flow. <laughs> They said, so, you know, the saying so is, he who, don't, he who don't work, don't what? Don't eat. Don't eat. <laughs> you, you know, ain't gonna eat. we have to provide. We have, man, we have to provide for our household, for our women, for our moms, for our sisters, for our community. Men, step up. Step up today. Step up. Yeah, you definitely got to step up. And, and I mean, because... I can't look at you as a man. I'm not saying that you're not striving to be that, but how am I to look at you as another man and to have a, I can have a talk with you. Come on. Reference and say man a man, but I can't really call, be calling you this man yet until you actually able to provide for yourself. Come on. You can't be living in your mother basement playing PlayStation all day long. <laughs> you know, if things happen as reference to elements, of, of society, you lose a job and you have to move back to the aspect of home. We get that. that that's, yeah. that's something different that happens in life. You know, and this is today's society of capitalism. But overall, you have to be able to go out to be able to provide, whether if it's working on somebody's job or actually creating the jobs, which means leads to right to where we need to be as reference to creating our own marketplace to where mm. we have. And we can tell people today Go over there and, and apply for a job there because somebody I, because I know somebody over there that's going to hire you regardless of what has been going on in your situation. And they'll keep me updated on what you've been doing, how your performance is. There you go. And that's that's the aspect of controlling your community. That's it. And giving people um, jobs and giving people uh, the, the, the opportunity to do something great for their community, great for their families. So number that's six is need. definitely, definitely key. We're going to go on to number seven. Do not damage property or crops of the poor. Oppress masses. So, you know, as reference to what we look at, and, you know, of course, we live in different areas. Um, most of us live in big urban city areas. So that could be even damaging anything. That, that that's some that's a part of somebody's property is is a raw doing you know that's that four and, and seven go would go hand in hand paying for anything you damage then go back to not damaging anybody's property or crops if somebody has a farm and then you go oh I, I, I'm, I'm you get you're jealous hearted uh, because they're growing something that you have never had the experience in growing a set of new using number one speaking politely and asking them now sir <laughs> can you show me how to grow what you're growing yeah i had a situation like that. come on yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know i've been through some <laughs> you, you, and it, 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 it's it puts me in a position to be able to talk about it because i've seen some strange strange things that, that our people do so here's the strange thing that i've went through you know growing i wasn't growing crops but i was doing a project with my daughter we were growing this cabbage and then we had to go up for a school project. So she growing. I said, well, we're going to use the, the yard to do it. So we did it in the backyard and it grew really big. I said, man, this, uh, this little space that I had, I said, I got to move it because we got, we have dogs. So I had to move it from, because of okay. course the dogs don't know. You got to, I always got to keep up on them because they're going to go, I don't touch that gift, you know, and if you're not watching them, they'll they're go tear it up. anywhere. Yeah, tear it up and pick <laughs> at it. And I told you to get away. You got to keep going back and forth. So, and having the time to keep from doing all that back and forth, I moved it outside of the yard, on the side of the house in the gangway. And planting it, I shared the pathway with the neighbor. So I planted. And so this is what I did. I fixed up my side really nice. I put in some plants. I said, well, I'm going to let the cabbage finish growing in this area. And I'm gonna fix it up because this is a part of my area here. Even though her grass reached over into my area, that one particular part where my gate was at mm -hmm. is what was where that I can you know, utilize this to be part of my property. Okay. So whether it was my property or not, I cleaned out even her side. Her side had shrubs and it was ragged and rugged. I said, well, you know, I'm being neighborly, being polite. I said, I'm polite to clean, <laughs> fix this all up, put flowers and make it look real nice. You know, this lady, 
this black lady came out and plucked up the cabbage. So I came home, I looked on the side of the house, I'm looking at like, oh. I'm thinking, I said, oh, a dog or something pulled it. I said, well, we'll pull that out and, and damage it like that. Put it back in. I was happy to be at home one day. Here comes the neighbor, bro, strolling on out, just all casual. Now everything up in front of her house, her shrubs and stuff, ragged paper and stuff all in between the bushes. This cabbage was a, a bother to her. Now the rest of the property looking shabby and torn up. I said, I said, I'm just, I'm trying to just mentally think this through. So this lady must have a mental problem to remove that. And I said, what was the purpose of removing a cabbage that wasn't, it wasn't like it was, a, I said, this is a crop. And it wasn't on her side. No. Yeah. Wasn't growing all wild up her house and treating vines and to go through the pavement and go through the cracks of the foundation and all. Wasn't doing any of that. So again, having cold and sticking to cold is reference to what that says. Do not damage property or crops of the poor. And I mean, we'll consider myself, I, you know, I'm poor to somebody that's rich, but uh, that goes a long way. Um, definitely, it, 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 it would oppress me if that was my a prop that I need to feed my family. So, you know, that that, that it is an aspect of being a quota action and where we have reverted from. And it, this, this, is, this, this particular lady was an older lady as well, you know, it, it, which puzzled me that she would, it was in her mind to carry on as such. And, Dr. K. Mm-hmm. Maybe she wanted to have cabbage and cornbread later on that evening for supper. <laughs> All she had to do was what? Do one, politely speak, right? <laughs> or two, if she had came and asked politely and paid a fair price is what I would have charged there you her. Go. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> or three, if she would have borrowed it and then said, hey, I'm going to give you seeds in return. <laughs> come on now. Come on. <laughs> and then four. <laughs> she said, well, if I plucked it up like that, I'm going to pay for the damages, right? Mm-hmm. And five, <laughs> which, which I didn't mention the second time that that happened, my wife wouldn't have went out and swear and start and almost hit her. Yeah. See, we would have to, re- she wouldn't, we would we would we would have refrained from doing all of that right. if she had just followed those previous steps, Right. And then I didn't want to go out there and take the liberties from this woman, right? So, so I was still using the code because in my mind I said, what I thought first is to go out there and shake her and give her the backhand of the, you know, we let me get out of line for a second minute spin. Let me get off cold, you know, give her the pimp slap. <laughs> but no, I know I stay on cold, so I don't, yeah, I don't want to give her yeah. the backhand. We, we don't advocate that. <laughs> we do not. But it, it, the, the situation at hand, man, because it, because it, here again, we go into number seven. Now she's damaging crops. And this right. is to say that was a crop that I'm for business. I'm doing this in business. If you damage yeah. it, not saying that it, it opened up the door for me to go out there and backhand her, right? But surely if I was able to use another woman's hand as my wife, I took my wife's hand and, and, and popped her in the mouth. <laughs> well, the hey, way. Look. but I don't want to use my hand. Yeah, no king to queen, but queen to queen, that's a different level. Yeah, that's a different level there. Look, life is a chess game. Come on. Right. So, so you know, it, my wife, she shouldn't have maneuvered in that way to go out there to swear, of course, yeah. being off code. But, you know, the, the situation was kind of, I did go and speak with her politely about what was happening. And talk with her calmly and say, hey, what was the need for that? After the fact, I caught her on the back. And then she apologized. Um, see, see how easy, it was just that easy. So what was her purpose of taking that cabbage in the first place? She had no rhyme or reason. She couldn't even explain. Wow. It she couldn't even explain her, her when I asked her. Disturbed her. Wow. It was just, it was right. Something just, it just disturbed her for whatever reason. So we're gonna go into number eight, and and we definitely gonna add on to on to these because this is this is the eight that I've um, came up with um, as far as the code of action. 
uh, if we have, if you ever have to take, to, to, if you ever have to take captives, do not ill treat them. Meaning that, so if you had to take someone captive, maybe there's someone that broke into your house, and I know, you know, we <laughs> we we get that mind thought of let's be talking about what we go we go back to number five and what we say we didn't want to do. You know, hey, I wish an Ian would break in my house. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> we've heard that before. Mm -hmm. So if they do, and you do catch them in the action, and you get the, they say you get one up on them. There's, there's several ways you can handle that. I mean, you, yeah, do you give a warning? Possibly. You know, that guy, you, you shouldn't even have to swear. You know, you shouldn't even, I mean, you want to ask questions. Why are you here for one? But if, I mean, of course, that's that's the one, that's one there is to, is to play with. But if that captive could be meaning that if there's something, that could be something that you may have to capture someone to get the, you know, may have to capture someone who may not be treating you properly. That, that can go a long way. Uh, you know, we, we, we don't we don't go in depth into that because that, that can go on a higher level in reference to talking about that particular uh, one of taking captive of someone and then not, you know, of course, you know, if you have to take them captive, meaning that someone had maybe done some wrong and you have to imprison them, you know, of course, you feed them, clothe them, make sure they have a comfortable aspect of, and then at that point, you can give them a, a point of trial. And again, trial meaning a, meaning a community trial. Say, hey, this person has been doing this in the community. What, what do we do with him or her? And we don't have to. And, and, and at that point, that's where we keep law, greater society of law out of our business at that point. Because we know for the most part, they'll cap, they'll take him, put him in jail. Next thing you know, he's out again doing the same thing. So we have to rid this cancer that sends society out. And the way they do it today, to me, is not the proper aspect of doing it. It's, you know, it's, it's jails are full of us. And you look, look at the numbers, the jails are packed. Okay, would you repeat number eight once again? If you ever have to take captives, do not ill treat them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, if, if there's someone inside of my house and there, there's, there's only one code that I'm gonna use. <laughs> you were strange inside my house, and that's the velocity and energy. Whatever weapon I have, the velocity, velocity outside your head, and the energy that is coming from that weapon, that's it. You, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. True. You, you know, uh, I, I, I don't know about that. It, Holding somebody captive and treating them well and all that stuff, man. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. That's what I say. That that can go back and forth. Now, somebody yeah. in your house and they're not supposed to be there, of course. You know, that's okay. what I was saying. But if you have right. this person is in your house and you have to take them captive, okay, you're here. I said, why are you here? And the way I have, the way I run my neighborhood is that we have a, a aspect of court, and you you will be held captive. We're gonna treat you right until judgment time comes. Mm. So judgment can lead, and and the 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 negative of that is that, or the positive of that is that one of our rules is that well you won't go free, so we just go over what would be your punishment. But we you know those are those are part of things that um, is to be talked about. Uh, number eight, of course, is is is, is definitely can be aligned with certain things. And that talks about the political thing. I was I was going to go into some things in reference to politics and talking about this. Um, <laughs> Dr. K, do we have um, uh, time for these five um, levels that I came up with on the on the subject of code? Oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead, because that 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 least ended the eight that I came up with. But yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so our our code of action uh, undergirds our code of ethics, and so ethics is what is moral principles that govern a person's behavior or conduct. So a code of ethics is an official standard of conduct uh, within a group of people uh, which uh, they are expected to achieve. Uh, it, a code of ethic establishes behavioral expectations within a culture. So the, the code of ethics helps assist members in understanding the difference, here it is, between right and wrong, and in applying that understanding 
towards your decision. So that's why we all need a code of ethics within our own community. You said you have one on your block. That's great. That, that needs to be multiplied all over the city, all over the places where we stand. A code of ethics. How are you going to conduct yourself uh, uh, in that way? And so I came up with five different levels. The first level of code of ethics is to have integrity. What does that mean? That means doing what's right <laughs> when people are around, doing what's right when nobody is around. you got integrity. It's like this. I know you have integrity, Dr. K. You know that I have integrity because what we say, we do. We speak our minds, but we speak the truth. So there's no double standard. You know I have integrity, and I know that you do. But you're going to do what's right when people are around and nobody's around. Number two is unity. Our code of ethics must have unity. That means together we look out for each other. Man, when I know you got my back and I got your back, man, I'm living comfortable. I don't have to worry about nothing. I don't have to, you know, uh, have anxieties. I wonder what's going to happen. I, no, I got your back. You got my back. And we're covered. So integrity and unity and then objectivity. Objectivity is having that vision. Like, like this vision that you uh, have, Dr. K, and you came up with. Man, well, what happened? You spoke it into existence. We, you kept speaking. You kept talking to somebody about it. And, and, and that person added this. And then you came up with that vision. So uh, objectivity. Then here it is, confidentiality. Man, don't be speaking my business. Right. <laughs> I won't speak right. your business. Right, right. Have confidence. Right. Man, yeah. one thing I don't like is gossip. I tell you something in confidence, next thing I know, you telling somebody else, how would you know my confidence? How would you know that? Man, it's all over confidence. the place. Listen, have confidence. If I come to you in confidence, I tell you something about my personal life, which I rarely do, right. but, but uh, there are people, and you're one of them, that I come to and talk about my personal life, and here it is. I don't expect you to be telling uh, everybody down the block and vice versa. And so we must u utilize that in our code of ethics dealing with each other. And the last one is growth. Man, this ain't no plaything. We're, we're looking for a measurable outcome. This is called life. This is real. This is as real as it gets. This is real as it gets. My life is in the balance. Your life is in the balance. Your, 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 your family, my family, our brothers and sisters, this is real. Look out for the growth and promote the growth of our community. And those are our codes of ethics. Yeah. Code of ethics against the code of action. Yes. There you have it. And those are the things that we need to align ourselves here out um, and re and updating our code if we haven't been close to one well, we need a code out here in the, in the streets as they say in the streets we need a code in the Man. Streets. we definitely need a code in the streets because there's no code anymore i mean there was a time even when, when you look at aspect of you know, what, they, what they would call a gang these gangs it's, it was it was really based on some of these gangs formulating were they were creating code as reference to the code of one protection for the community. Yeah, that's that's why, for the most part, why some of these gangs out here, the El Rook, and the, the, the Keystone Rangers, the, the even Disciples, right? You know, these these gangs being mm. broken into how they were formulated was creating a code of conduct as reference to how they dealt with things in the streets. Yep. Most of them started based on protecting. Yeah, uh, yeah. Supposed to have been protecting, really. That's what they started out as reference to protecting the community. But then, of course, they start branching out into the other things first to, for financial reasons. And this got off and, track. And, they lost and provided. Aspect. Yeah, and, pro and they and provided. provided. Yeah. They provided. So it, it's, it's so many. You know, we're not going to go into detailed names. And there are uh, other historians who, who bring about certain names of these different groups. Um, I know of them. I just don't speak on them. But for the most part, they, they I mean, it's good to explain the history. Um, Man, uh, two, about them you know you mentioned it two of them and but they and i did mention a few of them on on the surface level but there was some uh, grassroots ones that we you know that most people don't even know of and mm. they did 
do things as reference to trying to their overall thing was like, you know what? Okay, if that's the problem that we got, we're going out to fix it. Yep. They didn't just say it is what it is, that cliche that I hate <laughs> and, and is used in every aspect. <laughs> you know, it is, what it, is. <laughs> they, they, well, it is what it is. That ain't my problem. And you got that problem. That problem continues every day. And you keep saying, well, it is what it is. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing I can do about it. It's like, uh, I said, so your car break down. It is what it is. I can't get to work. It is, what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Don't look for me help. You just told me it is what it is, so I can't help you. <laughs> so we have to stay away from it and know when to use that term. That term yeah. is to be used properly. Uh, we, we get so loosely with that term. We're supposed to use it properly when there's when it's a cause. For oh, and everything is everything. Yeah, everything is everything. You know, it's everything ain't everything. That's what we need to turn that over to. Uh, everything ain't everything, and it ain't what it seems, as they say. So we, we have to be mindful of a lot of those terms that come about because they they can they can th those terms to me get us away from the code of of it action does. and the code of ethics. It does. We, we, we revert from using and and we, we refrain when we start using these terms. It, it was it, it is what it is, and everything is yeah. everything. Yeah, we point. spoke on those these cliches before on the, on the previous show when it's about these 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 tacky cliches um, because they 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 become mm. so relevant to you at that point because it's easy to use yeah. and then you get comfortable in what you do, what you're doing and then you forget about you and you say well since I'm comfortable in that aspect all now all my problems went away but they still there but all They're my still problems there. went away so that that mm -hmm. that goes back to your mental state where is your mental state to think that your problems are not gone. So, so we have to pay attention to that, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't had a great show. I, you know, we we started slow, and we wanted to ease our way through this thing to to play pay close attention to updating the code. You know that. I, I, matter of fact, that that may be on to what I'll be doing in the speed. We're gonna do that. That's gonna be our intro to the show. Every day we come on, we are gonna read these code of ethics, and we are gonna read these code of, the code of action. The way it sticks, the way yep. it formulates and start being a, and we read those off. I'll read the eight. I got my five. The, and you read through five, and we add that to the pot, and we keep stirring that every time. That's how we gonna come in our intro. That's it. We're gonna come in the intro saying that, ladies and gentlemen. We'll say good morning, but we are gonna intro to you to the code of conduct, the code of ethics, the code of action. Is what we call it now, it's code of action. So we need action like now. We need we we need a right now action because we out of the loop at this point. You know that's 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 just like now we coming into this political arena things. Here we are right back around again. Political games that's about to be played again. And the question we should be asking ourselves is what are we going to get out of me being pushed to the voting poll? You're asking me to go vote. And my question should be, what am I voting for? Not just going, as I heard again, and it's a P, the negative, he go another negative. That's another cliche that we missed. I, I hate that we missed it, but we're going to talk about it now real quick. Man, I asked a question to this one brother. I said, man, why are you going to vote? Quickly, he said, because my ancestors died for the right for me to go vote. I said, that's it? Yeah. So I said, that's all you're going to vote for? You ain't going to vote for your children, niece, nephew, for what is to come for them the next 20 years? I said, your ancestors gone. You here, and this is what you, you're voting for the next 20 to 30 years, and you're just saying, hey, oh, I'm just going to vote because somebody told me that my ancestors died. I just looked at him for a minute. I couldn't really say much to him, but shake my head because I said, wow. I said, we still are hanging on to that cliche about somebody going, saying that my ancestors died for me to vote. And that's all you're going out. Even if that is the case, ministry, right? Let's just say that is the case, that your ancestors died for you to vote. Your second question should be, well, what am I getting out of this vote? Right, what am I voting for? What am I voting for? What's the purpose? to be looking at somebody different every time. I can go outside and just look out in the window, out of my window if I want to see a different person walking past. I'm voting for somebody to look at different in the in office. Well, I just need a new face. Forget about the benefits or anything that's supposed to happen 
to me as reference to how society should be wrapped around me. Forget about that. But I just, it is what it is. <laughs> everything is everything. Everything is everything. So I just went and voted. You know, they give us those little stickers. Stickers should be saying, yeah, I voted. But at the bottom, it should say, for something. That's what the sticker should say. It, it, it's incomplete. You know those stickers that they give us when you go and vote? Mm-hmm. I voted. And that's all it says. Right. It should be saying, matter of fact, we should, that's what I told you. We need to go into that. I voted. And then at the bottom, for something. And not for, it is what it is. And everything is everything. I didn't vote for that. Right. I didn't vote it- for that. And, and, and here, here's the understanding that we are trying to promote here at this, at, at, at this on this show, on your show, Dr. K. Let's look at this. Is uh, we have to know what we want, what it is that we need. Remember, it's health, housing, education, and economics. That's what I'm voting for. So anybody that is speaking that language that's going to help promote us in housing. Why, why is housing so important? Because you need a place to live. Uh, education because you need to understand and become educated in life health you, you, you need to go inside of a medical facility and get the same standard of care that everyone else does in economics we need a place at the table for equity and equality and so we must understand those are the things that, that you're voting for whoever supplies that there's your vote That's what's important. important. Thank you, Pamela, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the important things that we need to be wrapped around. Those are the important things that we need to understand as reference to, and, and that goes in the reference to our code of conduct. A code of conduct, a code of action. A code of action, code of action, code of action, code of action, code of ethics, code of conduct, code of action, code of action, code of conduct. So and they start bounce, bouncing between those two, and that'll tell you, that'll tell you how to go vote. That'll that'll tell you. Say, well, if I go through those things, a code of action, and if I go through a code of ethics, does that align with what I need to do? And then even more, is it is it, is it going to benefit me? If it ain't gonna, if it ain't gonna do any of the things. And even if it touches on one, and if and that's one is, is not enough, it needs to touch on all those points. If it ain't touching on all those points, why 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 be a part of it? Why go do it? Yeah, I mean, we, we people saying to go, well, I go vote to because I'm supposed to have what? No, okay, not that's because you're supposed to because you supposed to get something. And that, that is the whole purpose. You're supposed to get something out of your vote. You're voting for something. Again, I voted sticker for something. Listen, Dr. K, uh, I want us to understand the power of our words. We can start speaking a candidate into existence. You can start speaking the, 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 the one who we want to represent us that encapsulates the housing, health, the education, and economics that's going to promote our growth. We start speaking that uh, politician into into existence now and, and start formulating it. Our, they'll hear our words because our words are powerful. And it's just like the analogy that you gave. If there's a problem in a store, you call the manager. When 600 people talk to that manager, guess what's going to change? What we want. What we want is going to change it's because it's going to become manifested. So we use the power of our words now to start creating our, our political uh, um, uh, representative right now. We need somebody, and, and, and our listeners are hearing this, we need somebody who promotes our health, our housing, our economics, and our educational structure that's going to promote our, remember the two pillars of any community is education and economics. Dr. Oh, K always oh. says economics and then education. I say it's education and economics. So we, only, we got the two pillars though. Yeah, as long as we had the two pillars and they go back and forth between the two, we're going to be all right. I mean, of right. course, alphabetically, you know, but I mean, if you, if, you, if you ain't got the money, 
you can't produce proper education, right? But you still have to educate to get the proper economics, right? So they go, they go hand in it hand. It goes back and forth, yeah. They go back and forth. So people, that's, ladies and gentlemen, that's definitely been our time. Please uh, go to our YouTube channel, KTSE dash TV and like and share and please tune in to us on uh, KWKTSE radio. We're coming with some new things this year. Uh, hopefully we have those things out soon. That way you can um, go through your mobile phone device and be able to click on us real fast and instead of link being um, placed in your email or text to most of our listeners. Um, yeah. you, you, you'll be able to download uh, app pretty soon. So we, we, we're working. We're getting better at this. Uh, we, you know, it's, it's a journey. So it's a process. We need the vision. more of this. Yeah, that vision. You know, I said forget a dream because that dream can easily turn into a nightmare. And I wake up in sweats. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Somebody <laughs> tried to get me in my sleep. So forget that dream. I ain't dreaming, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't like Disney. Talking about dreams coming true. I'm talking about having a vision so I can see where I'm going. That's what I'm looking for. I ain't looking for a dream that possibly may come true. I want to have a vision to where, hey, if I want to go, hey, I got this vision to go and do this. I, I see it. I can see it. I'm writing it down. I'm looking on paper. I ain't dreaming about it. I'm visioning. I'm going to be a visionist. I'm going to be a visionary person. So as always, uh, it's been it's been a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, on today's show to go over the code of action and the code of ethics. And we're going to continue that process as we move through the year, um, whether we are here or gone. Uh, we want that to stick. That way, the next generation yeah. can use that, as we said before, that blueprint for that bridge so they can build a better bridge than what we're building now. All right. So that's been our time. See y'all. Peace don't, out. <laughs> don't forget to check out Love at Work Ministry. Yes. Sunday. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Every Sunday from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Love at Work Ministry. ministry. Yeah, we, we got so caught up in this ministry. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, okay. definitely, definitely <laughs> check out Love with Work Ministries in the morning so you can get your, your righteous food. You get that righteous food. Maybe that can get, because uh, look, you're getting some righteous food today. Yeah. So now tomorrow you get that righteous food spiritually and then you put them together. Now you got yourself something to work with. That's like, a, that's something like, look, that's that cabbage that that lady was taking out of my yard. <laughs> 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 and I was gonna give her that seasoning. <laughs> you know that our brother that he always uh, talking about putting seasoning on stuff. I would, I would call his name out. Call, call me brown. <laughs> he say he need that good seasoning. <laughs> it's okay with that. We put this good seasoning on it. Uh, and that's been our time. We we definitely went over. So, uh, but it, it was good to go over to get this um, code of action out and the code of ethics. And make sure that that sticks, and, and and I hope I hope it plays over, in reference to everything that we do, especially uh, on all our platforms that we provide to our people. Um, we definitely gotta get more of our platforms out there. You know, love and work ministries. Uh, uh, even our sisters that needs to be joining us back soon. Uh, Jay Reese on the Love uh, or Fresh Air show. You know. We, I'll be pushing that there as best as we can. Pushing this all over the, the station must as it allows us to. Yeah. So that's definitely been our time. And don't forget tomorrow, 8 a.m. Love at Work Ministries will be on deck. See y'all next week. Peace out. <laughs>